Welcome, welcome to the Arizona Real Estate News Show. We took last week off. And uh, uh, is that I a think, pause because we were gone? Yeah, yeah. There are, you know, there are people that uh, probably just said, "Thank God we got a break." Uh, but uh, but now we are back. So, so we've got that going for us, and uh, so we are here to irritate the few and educate the many. And uh, I am and have Mr. a good time. Yes, I am Mr. Negative Rick McComb with EXP Realty with the dynamic duo of Jackie and Ruby and Pat. What's my rate, McMasters? And we are going to, uh, we try every Thursday. We pre record this on Wednesday. So we just try to recap what we've seen. And uh, we kind of make, you know, a few guesses on where it's going, but we are no, we are not prognosticators of the market. You know, we, nobody's guesses. I don't even know what that word means. Oh, per, yeah, I don't either. That gives you something to look up when the show's okay. over. Um, so, you know, I, I like to say things that you have to Google and even I have to go. What did I say? Um, so, but I want to start and, and it's interesting because there's, and we're probably going to get into a little bit today on this, on this inventory discussion, because Jackie, you and I were talking a little earlier and there's so much brouhaha about our inventory. And this is uh, active listings. You can see that we've gone down since the beginning of the year, but guess what? We've done that the past three years. Now you can put in 2019 and that was the opposite. We started going up and then went down. But when you start looking at cities, like on the Cromford market index, it tells different stories by city. Like here's Gilbert Cromford market. Sorry, index. Still What's that? So while we wait for Ruby to come back, I want to show that Gilbert has got the Crawford Market Index is coming up and Chandler is doing the same thing. But when you get to the outlying areas like Buckeye, they're flat. Maricopa's flat. It's just uh, um, shows you the impact of all that new construction out there. And uh, the other impact that we have is interest rates. And interest rates and Ruby has sent us a message I think her uh, lost internet or something. Nope, she's back. Ruby, you have made up with the internet gods. You are back. It so. was the most bizarre thing. Everything was spinning and you guys just disappeared. And then it oh. studio was gone. We were here and you were frozen. So, huh. so Pat, um, I don't want to say it was an ugly week in rates, but we went from like 6.9 to 7.10 at one point. And, uh, uh, is there, is it looking like there's still upward pressure or did, was this another kind of short-term blip here? <clears throat> yeah, obviously it's anybody's guess, but, uh, yeah, it was, you know, you see the chart here, you know, toward the end of last, this last couple of days, these last candles right in here. I mean, it's been just a real choppy market. You know, we saw, we went from the high, high sixes to, you know, yeah. I mean, there's still high sixes, low sevens, um, it's just been obviously from set from February, you know, we got February, you know, the whole month of February was just uh, a tough, tough, you know, mar you know mark market. And uh, we're starting to see the market's obviously waiting for the CPI numbers to come out next week. And uh, I think these CPI numbers, March 10th and 14th, you get the feds, what they're going to do. I mean, I think that's going to, I think this month, quite frankly, is going to set the tone for the next couple months, you know, and Barry was saying that uh, obviously the job gains, there was job gain numbers that came out today. And, you know, the bonds today was just really, they started out strong, but then, you know, it was kind of interesting because the bonds were trading, you know, going up against the strong economic job reports. I mean, they were still came out of the gate um, looking pretty strong, uh, which was really surprising. And, but then the 10 year auction came out and, you know, the market we saw it down the 10, five and a half coupon was down 14 basis points. We're sitting at 398 right now. You know, it's been sitting that four, that 4% 4 level for some time here. You know, actually the last couple of days, I, it's, it seems like we're just at a crossroads and we're going to see what happens with the, C, the CPI numbers. And Barry says that, you know, uh, you know, he feels that March 10th, you know, 14th are going to be big days uh, in the market. You know, we're, we're seeing some volatility and it's, been really interesting it just seems like uh, you know you know obviously traders always try to get ahead you know they sell bonds rates go up 
you know, so there's just a lot of volatility. I, it's just, it's really kind of day by day. <laughs> well, I that- saw, I, I, I heard a thing on the radio today where one of the congressmen said that he hopes that Jerome Powell gets on Amazon and orders a spine so that he can go to Congress and say, stop spending money. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's the thing good. I think you're seeing in the markets, just this tug and pull from the fiscal and the, uh, the, the feds, the different policies. And, you know, the financial markets basically are, will adjust according to the data. And traders are kind of waiting to see what happens with the CPI. Um, you know, like I said, Barry has been a proponent that the inflation is going to start coming down. He said, that, you know, the job gains, he feels that the job gains are going to come to an end because during COVID, there was about 10 million jobs that were lost. And, uh, you know, they, you know, I guess, you know, from what data says, we've been adding about 100,000 jo- 100, 100, jobs every month since the recovery. But basically, he says we're getting close to recovering those jobs. And he goes, he doesn't see much money, more gains, you know, from the leisure side. But, you know, you're seeing job losses on, you know, you know leisure versus I look at I just look at the leisure market versus like job like Cisco and Microsoft, those job losses, I think, are more important. And um, I wish they would, you know, obviously, I think there's more uh, meat when Microsoft loses 10,000, you know, lets off 10,000 people. Well, I just think it's a shame that that we now have approach that an approach that says we need more layoffs in order to tame inflation. I'd rather see us get more growth and because we've had that before, we've had that uh, where we've had a lot of growth and no inflation. And so I don't think just, you know, killing jobs is the way to do it. But I'm I'm no uh, scholar. So I, you know, I'm not quite sure how this will all will all pan out. But, uh, you know, I, you know, they say that, you know, <laughs> before a recession, the unemployment rate hits the lowest point. You know, they're they're You know, they're, if you think about the feds, I, I just. This, this Federal Reserve just seems off. I mean, I just, you know, they were calling, you know, they were talking about inflation was, tra- you know, trans, you know, they're transitory last year, you know, year and a half ago. They just seem like they're, I don't know, I just something doesn't seem like they're all, they're clicking on all cylinders because the theory is that, you know, if you stop and think about it, like you said, unemployment, they say unemployment rate is the lowest, right? And, that's really when a recession, because it, it's eventually going to rise. I mean, so it's their 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 thinking is backwards. It seems like I just so so. Let me ask, let me ask you a question though. So, do you think, in the Fed's view, they want home prices to come down, or do they just want them to stop going up? I think they want they want them to come down, but um, they're. But they, they can't be blind to see what's going on. That there's no inventory. Yeah, well, they they are they are. I mean, they're just they're academia. You know, they're academia sitting in their white white buildings in Washington. And um, I, I just think that this Barry has been saying Barry Habib from Mortgage Back Security, he's been blasting the Federal Reserve the last year, just saying that they're out of touch. I mean, a couple of times he's been. You know, I watch the morning updates every morning, and he just says um, this Fed just doesn't get it. I mean, and he's been. I think he's been more right than them. And, um, you know, he said, he says, uh, you know, the shelter costs are going to start coming or starting to come down. Um, that's going to be reflected in the inflation numbers. And, um, you know, I said, I'm following Barry versus the Powell because I, I it just something just doesn't sit right with me. And it doesn't sit right with Barry following him. It's just what these guys are doing. It doesn't make well, Ruby quick, quick question is, um, are, are your buyers sensing, are they staying on top of, of rates are they or are they kind of you know leaning on you has, has this been the kind of week where maybe some decisions were delayed or changed i would probably say um no i mean they ask what the rates are i usually just direct them back to the lender that they're using because it, there's so many factors involved um but my buyers are still looking and we I showed houses all last weekend. So um that and Jackie's been super busy also. Um but yeah, we're Yeah, it is it is despite the doom and gloomers out there, it's been uh been pretty brisk. Um I mean, I had a listing I mean, and it the, had, 
you know, nine showings Friday and four on Sunday and 15 groups go through on the open house. It's like, what, it's what happened to this deadness we're supposed to have? <laughs> well, I mean, right. Some of the houses that I showed this last weekend, one, for example, $990,000 house. So, I mean, that's a million dollar house on the market, zero days as of Saturday, showed the house. Sunday, we went back, took another look at it. We're going to write a uh, write an offer on it. They were so excited. I text the agent again. I'd been texting with him um, throughout the morning and the evening before. And then he says, if you're going to make an offer, please get it to me as soon as possible. I plan to, re to present by six o'clock. And this was three and he had three offers on hand. Wow. And they were all good, viable offers. So we didn't write, my buyers are contingent. So we didn't write. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. So, so Jackie, we, we had a discussion today about um, these people that look at our inventory numbers and say they shot up. And uh, so, therefore, we have a problem. And they're not from here. Right. So... I'm quite agitated at the moment and I honestly feel bad for the consumer. It's so frustrating because these people that are, I get it. They're, they're not agents. They might have their license, but they're not boot on the ground. They are full-time YouTubers and they're making their money by monetizing their channels or referring clients out. Ruby and I, I mean, I've been doing this forever and we don't work as transactional agents. We work as relational agents. So everybody is a specific scenario, whether the, some people should buy, some people shouldn't buy, some people should sell, some people shouldn't sell. Mm -hmm. Everybody's scenario is different. But what I am so tired of is watching these people get on YouTube and they give half truths. And then the rest of it is just, it's manipulated because it gets the clicks. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's, I'm like, it's mind blowing to me at this point. And the, and the one guy, uh, I'm not going to say the name, but the one guy who was uh, doing a video about all the vacant homes that, um, not all the vacant homes, all the uh, new construction that was just sitting, what he failed to, to state, he was there at four o'clock in the afternoon. I've been in and out of that subdivision. I looked at 30 different homes with that client and probably 13 different subdivisions. Four o'clock in the afternoon, the workers have gone home. Go there at nine o'clock in the morning. They're busy as can be. And Centex, which was the builder that he was showing the homes, Centex builds, they, they build two versions of each model. And they're basically, they're not spec, but they're, they're you know, ready built, ready soon. You know, you go in, you pick they're the house inventory. you want. They're inventory homes. Yes, thank you, Ruby. I couldn't remember the name. They're inventory homes. So they build them ahead of time. Now, I talked to that rep in there so much. They're selling them like hotcakes. So what they do is Polte is more custom, where you do get to pick some of the stuff. And it's upper end. Centex, they keep their price down by doing inventory homes. You got two choices of color palettes, two choices of elevation, two choices of flooring. And that's all you get to choose. But it gives you a super affordable home. I mean, those are selling like hotcakes out there. They're in the 300s for a brand new home. People are eating them. Were they up. at, were they at Jackie? They're, those are out in Buckeye. And, and I, you know, I talked to the rep out there and she said, no, we're not worried. We kind of watch, we build a bunch, we let it catch up. We build a bunch, we let it catch up. They, they're not stressed at all. And so these people so what they're also on, doing. Go ahead. Well, what they, well, go, well, alongside that, um, it's not that they're they're building them as they go along so they have them in different stages for different buyers needs they have yes. them in 30 days they have them ready in 45 or 60 days mm -hmm. maybe they have some that are just starting that you can go under contract and and you can pick it up in four or five months so you know having that inventory in progress constantly mm -hmm. and consistently gives them you know that buyer walking through the door there's something to meet almost every buyer's needs and right. they're good products right they do and, and so then I watched a video today and the guy was showing our, our inventory has escalated 300 and something percent. He's comparing it to 21 and 22. It, it just makes no sense whatsoever. Now I will tell you, he did show, okay, well, but here's the 2019 and the 2018 numbers. And we are lower than that. If you are going to report on our market, which I have no problem with that, 
but they're confusing people. They're confusing the heck out of the consumers. And I feel bad for them because consumers don't know what they should do. They're, from, well, they're like, I've, I've got to show you something here. That's that topic. Cause it, it I bumped into this this morning and uh, um, we have this guy here. And I don't know why that says no title down there below, but anyway, we all know who this guy is. Should we arm wave like him? Phoenix housing crash getting bad. 200% resurgent surge in homes for sale. So look at the chart, right? Mm -hmm. Boom, way up there. Well, this is down in the 4,800 range again, right? Right. Right. And I said, well, I'd feel better if we had a 500% surge. Now, put this, this next chart's going to put this in perspective. Here's the surge, right? Here's where we are. You are here. Here's our supply. Mm -hmm. Look at all the years past 2008, 56,180. So, yeah. in perspective, I mean, you're going to say we had a two, 300% surge. It only put us right here. Yeah. So it's a misleading topic. Now, I'm not trying to project out and say the real estate's going to be rosy and everything's going to be great. But I mean, the purpose of, 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 of the channel for me is to say, here's where we're at today and here's how it relates to where we used to be. And so if we, if I look at a number and say, yeah, it went up, but let me tell you what it used to be. Yeah, but right. these guys are not doing that. Right. And, the, and the commenters are going, you're telling the truth. You're telling it like it is. I go, no, they're not. Right. Just, you know, present all the facts. Here, here's what I'm going to say. If you were thinking about buying or selling a house, please get yourself an agent that you can trust. Have them show you the information that you need to see to make the best decision for you. We're not telling you to buy. We're not telling you to sell. I spoke with a gentleman last week. He called me. He's been renting. He's renting from a family member. He's got an, a fantastic deal where he's renting. And he was stretching. First, he he was compromising on what he wanted. He was, comp as far as the home, he was compromising where he was going to have to move. He was going to have to go on the outskirts. So now he was going to have spend an extra hour plus in the car a day and he was stretching it he was stretching himself he didn't feel comfortable he was scared to death i said don't buy something right now don't do it you've got such a great deal where you're at just yeah. wait a little yeah. bit maybe wait till the rates come down i can't tell you when that's going to be do i feel like the rates are going to come down but none of us can call this right and it's like so if you're thinking about doing anything Find yourself an agent that's just going to give you the facts. If it's a good agent, they want to be your agent for life. That's how we work. They don't want to just do one transaction. And if you come across an agent who's pushing you to do something one way or another, get the hell away from them. And I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we yeah, get, it's we can be mad. Yeah. Jackie, Dra Jackie had a couple of monster consumer. drinks before she got on. <laughs> no, I actually <laughs> gave up drinking for Lent. I might start yeah. drinking again. <laughs> You're such a quitter. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. I see the comments and some on some of the other channels, and uh, and you know, oh, one of them was, you know, these agents just try to get you to sell all the time. I'm like, well, maybe maybe the majority of them do. I don't know. Um, so I think um, I challenge people that are looking to buy or sell that they need to understand the numbers so that they can see what's right and what's wrong. Because if somebody just yeah. comes to you and says, inventory is up 300%, you need to have some perspective. Mm -hmm. Right. And, you right. know, and there's plenty of resources out there to get the, the real number and, and take a look. Now, I, you know, I never had those kind of resources, you know, and, you know, back when I was moving a lot, we just had the magazine you pulled out. I didn't know where inventory was. I got burned in California. Um, I got burned in upstate New York for, and I couldn't really see, I couldn't read the economic tea leaves. I didn't know that we were going to have a new governor when I moved to Albany and that he was going to lay off a lot of people in, uh, you know, in the government in New York state. He took over after uh, Como and he just laid everybody off. I'm like, uh, I was going to sell my house and move. Mm. <laughs> so, so those things you just can't, you know, you just can't predict. And that's why, you know, you just got to stay put sometime. I was only there a year. And yeah. uh, so, um, 
So Rick, I have to tell you, kudos to you because when COVID, and I don't know if a lot of people know this, but I watched Rick and Pat for almost two years before I ever even made a comment on the show. But when COVID first hit and you started doing your show, it was my way to sign on in the morning and not pay attention to all the, the, the craziness was out there. You just presented the facts. And, and that's what people need. They just need the facts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, so I appreciate that. So they can make that, their decision. You say, it. not only do you know the numbers, but you become a hit at all the cocktail parties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but you know, it helps us as well, though, when we get up, uh, you know, when you get up and you look at the numbers, because I, I do about 90 minutes of show prep, and I do some of it the night before, and I roll everything over the screen. In the morning, there's just a slew of numbers that I go through, and and that helps me understand the market better before I present it. But now I can recognize a small change right away because mm-hmm. I see okay. it. Everybody. But if you're not well, looking for a home, you're not going to do that. Right. No. And that, it's like watching a football game, watching the whole game versus watching the last three plays of the game. It's like, what you know. Yeah. yeah. You don't have any well, sense of what happened with the game. Yeah. How did we get here? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I just encourage people that, you know, when you look, when you're looking at these clickbait things and, and they're giving you a down 34%, yes, our sales are down 40%. That's not a big deal because yeah. they were so out of control that that's actually relief. That's yep. not, that's not a damaging number. Now, does yeah. it affect real estate agents? Yeah. Because, you know, there's a lot of us and there isn't as much business out there as there was. But, you know, that's just the way it goes. But, yeah. but Rick, number, can I say something to that? Sure. There's always going to be people who have to buy and sell. And yep. if you're a good agent, you're fine in any market. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, and I agree. And I think, but but the headline says, you know, sales down 40% end is near. We were all complaining last year that sales were too brisk. So why are we complaining now that they're down? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Last year, we're like, stop, stop. You know, I gotta, I'm so tired of pulling up to a house with 15 other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I mean, you had you had you had people that you had 15, 20, 30 offers. That, it was just insane. It's just stupid. Oh, I hated it. So I mean, I'm I'm happy that sales are down 40 percent. I wish inventory was up 500. Yeah. Well, here I'll tell you what. Here's a statistic that's interesting. I just saw this with Barry Habib put this out. 90 percent of the outstanding mortgages are under 5% or lower, 90%. Wow. And 70% of the mortgages are below 4%. Yeah. Well, and well, that, Warnock, that is, the, the senator from Georgia, asked Pal yesterday, he, he read that statistic. He goes, these people sitting on their 3% mortgages, um, it doesn't look like they're going to move. And Pal said, uh, I would assume none of them are moving. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Here's <laughs> the other thing, though. I did... Yeah. I I received a um, a text from one of my past clients that she was one of my very first clients um, when I got in the business and I've sold I've helped her buy and sell houses through the years but um, she has a three percent interest rate she just texted me today to ask me you know what are my thoughts about refinancing because her credit cards have not been her best friend or they have been her best friend and now they're not so. That's a huge thing that I'm hearing a lot on the news as well is that people's credit cards are just, you know, they're just getting skyrocketing. The interest rates are increasing on those um, because of the high interest rates. So she's thinking about refinancing or doing a HELOC just to pay those off and then refinance later. But I mean, if they... Interest rates on credit cards are ridiculous. So maybe it and that, that's, would that's benefit. Something for me as an agent, I wouldn't be able to advise anybody on that. I'd, I'd say get. No, know, I told her to call a lender. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'd be way out of my way to my league. I also read something today about the average car payment is $1,000. Oh Probably about right. But eight, I see a lot of 800, 900, you know, 700. I'm eight. Yep. Well, my truck's older than dirt. So, you know, it, it's a uh, mine's zero, but. No. I drive down the freeway. Not now. Not now. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't break on me now. So it's going to go into the shop next week and get a complete. Tell me how long this is going to last. Kind of an exam. So, but uh, well, folks, this was fun to kind of banter back and forth on. And we, you know, and we don't mean to 
Well, we do kind of mean to beat some of those people up because I think they're misleading you. They're putting you down the wrong path. And and uh, um, he called me I trash. Pay attention. Yeah, the one guy called you trash. Yeah, you I, offered to have a discussion with him. Yes, I even offered. Market. I offered to spend the day with him. I and I was nice. I said, you know what? If you're going to report, report it all. If you want to know what's happening here and the sentiment and from the boots on the ground does tell you something. I'm like, I am glad to meet you. I am glad to go over all the stats with you. You don't have access to our comfort mar uh, report. I'll share that with you. And all he did was wrote trash. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah, that, that, that's smart. That that <laughs> says a lot. That's right? real intelligent. Yeah. <laughs> and I well, was folks, courteous. I had, uh, was I had fun. I'm going to tell everybody to have a fabulous weekend. We will be back next week on Thursday and uh, we will do this again. Pat, I will see you on our Friday edition at three o'clock. Everybody take care. Have a good day. Take care. Bye. Take care.